The most common headlines that dominate military-oriented topics are the Ukraine war and China's threats to invade Taiwan. The strategic arms race often goes unnoticed behind the headlines. The Chinese are on a mission to greatly increase the number of nuclear missile silos in their western regions and increase their strategic nuclear capability. The Chinese had 200 nuclear weapons in 2019 and are on track to have more than 1,000 nuclear weapons by 2030. Russia is also in the process of not necessarily increasing its world-leading number of warheads, about 4,400, but modernizing its Soviet-era delivery systems and adding new capabilities in an attempt to defeat anti-ballistic missile systems. The less known aspect of arms modernization is that the United States is updating all aspects of its nuclear triad at the same time. Anti-nuclear protests in the 1970s and 1980s followed the last significant improvements the US made in its strategic nuclear forces, and these protests spread throughout the United States and Western Europe, particularly in West Germany. The Japanese anti-nuclear weapons stance, which has largely garnered popular support throughout Japan since 1945, is also worth noting. Popular protests, difficult for politicians on both sides of the Atlantic to ignore, dogged US nuclear policy, both weapons and energy, and created some level of restraint on nuclear policy and rhetoric. It can also be asserted that the nuclear protests of this era paved the way for nuclear arms limitation and reduction treaties. Several anti-communist hawkish supporters of the nuclear build-up legitimately questioned the organization of the anti-nuclear protests, given that the Soviet bloc also backed the Western protests. Nearly 50 years later, the nuclear modernization efforts of the US rarely make below-the-fold headlines in today's media, much less attract anti-nuclear protesters. One possible reason is that protesting a nuclear modernization program would be seen as a tacit nod to being soft on Russia, which is the villain du jour in most NATO countries. Protesting a policy that could be viewed as detrimental to Russia is often framed as wanting to be soft on Russia, which is verboten to much of the intellectual and political elite. Despite what one thinks of Russia and the role it and the West played leading up to and in the Ukraine war, the US strategic nuclear arsenal is old. Outside of the venerable B-52 Stratofortress, which has its development roots dating back to 1946 and first flight in 1952, most of the other US strategic weapons have development histories dating before the Carter administration, 1977 to 1981, and this includes the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. The United States currently has a stockpile of 3,750 warheads as part of a US strategic doctrine that divides its strategic nuclear forces into a three-legged stool called the nuclear triad. The idea is that each leg of the stool plays a specific role, giving the US political and military leadership options to conduct intercontinental nuclear strikes. The first leg of the nuclear triad is the land-based part, which consists of intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, and is considered the most likely first strike or launch on warning response to an incoming nuclear attack. The US ICBM force is considered to be the most powerful, longest range and most accurate weapon in the nuclear triad. Today, the US ICBM force consists only of 400 LGM-30 G Minuteman III three, three-stage solid rocket-fueled ICBMs that are in silos located in Wyoming, Montana and North Dakota. Deployed between 1970 and 1975, the Minuteman III boasts a range of 8,000 miles, 13,000 kilometers. In the late 1980s, the LGM-118 Peacekeeper replaced 50 Minuteman III's. The original plan was for the Peacekeeper to replace Minuteman III, but the start agreement eliminated it, leading to its eventual deactivation and destruction. This required extending the service life of the Minuteman III. The still developing LGM-35 Sentinel ICBM will finally replace the remaining Minuteman III's, which are approaching 60 years of deployed service. The Sentinel is expected to start replacing Minuteman 3s as early as 2029 and is expected to be in service until 2075. Similar to the Minuteman 3, the Sentinel will operate as a three-stage solid rocket intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, with a single warhead, the W87. As expected, the United States will acquire 634 missiles for deployment and 25 for development and testing support thereby increasing the US ICBM force by nearly 60%. In terms of payload capacity and throw weight, the Sentinel outperforms the Minuteman III. Although its projected range remains undisclosed, experts anticipate it surpassing 6,000 miles, 9,700 kilometers. The increased throw weight also means the Sentinel will have the capability to carry heavier or more warheads than the Minuteman III if the US chooses to do so.
The US strategic bombers form the second part of the strategic triad. Strategic bombers, unlike missiles from the other two parts of the triad, allow military and political leaders to recall an initiated nuclear attack before the release of nuclear weapons. The strategic bomber force comprises 46 nuclear-capable B-52H Stratofortress bombers and 19 B-2A Spirit Stealth bombers. 20 were originally procured, but one sustained irreparable damage. The US also has a high four B-2B Lancer strategic bombers, but they had their nuclear capabilities disabled in 1992 as part of the nuclear arms reduction agreements between the Soviet Union and later the Russian Federation. By the time they retire, the United States expects the B-52EH to continue flying into the 2040s, ensuring 90 years of active service in the US arsenal. The capabilities of the B-52EH and B-2A bombers are quite different, but both have the ability to fly extended ranges across continents. It is expected that the B-52H will serve as a delivery platform for standoff weapons, like air-launched conventional or nuclear-armed cruise missiles, rather than as a deep penetration bomber as originally designed. On the other hand, we expect the B-2A to employ a blend of stealth design and advanced sensor capabilities, enabling it to evade radar detection and penetrate deep into potential enemy territory thereby delivering precision strikes, including nuclear weapons. Its radar-avoiding qualities also mean that the B-2 Spirit is a viable first-strike weapon. The B-21 Raider, a replacement bomber that will eventually replace the B-52EH, B-1B and B-2A, is already in advanced development by the Defense Department. Like the B-2A, the B-21 is a stealth bomber and has a flying wing design. Currently, there is one B-21 that has been built and is in advanced testing stages, the expectation is that there will be 100 bombers built at a rate of 10 new bombers delivered every year starting in 2030. The B-21, despite having the same appearance as the B-2, is a smaller aircraft that will have a longer range, a lower bomb load, and more advanced stealth capability. Though stealth capabilities are not available, for obvious reasons the B-21 will have the benefit of decades of US stealth experience to improve upon the B-2 spirit. The 100 B-21 Raiders will replace 169 current US strategic bombers, significantly reducing the US's heavy bomber capability. However, since the B-1B Lancers are not nuclear capable, the number of nuclear capable strategic bombers will increase by 35 planes or 54%. The fact that the production line is expected to run for 10 years will result in later productions of the B-21, which will have the advantage of technology improvements versus the early versions and it will give the Air Force the option to purchase replacement bombers if any are lost prior to the end of the expected 10-year production run. The US Navy's SSBN, or Ballistic Missile Nuclear Submarines, is the last part of the strategic triad. The submarine portion of the triad, with its Ohio-class submarines, is considered the safest and most survivable part of the nuclear triad. The 14 Ohio-class submarines patrol deep underwater for months at a time, armed with 20 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, or SLBMs, and are considered nearly impossible to track by adversaries. This allows the United States to have a retaliatory capability in the event that a first strike destroys the other two legs of the triad, or a follow-up attack becomes necessary or at least threatened. These submarines are currently carrying MIRV-armed Trident II D-5 missiles, which gives the Ohio-class submarines enough firepower to destroy multiple countries from their deep ocean patrol zones. Despite their impressive record, the Ohio-class submarines, like many parts of the U.S. nuclear triad, are old. Built in 1976, the USS Ohio was commissioned in 1981. The USS Louisiana was the final submarine of the class, completed in 1997. The Columbia class will replace the Ohio class, with the construction of the USS District of Columbia already underway and expected completion in 2030. The Columbia class will use the same SLBMs as the Ohio class, but instead of carrying 20, reduced from the original 24, it will carry 16 and will only have 12 boats built to replace 14 Ohio-class SSBNs. This means that the SLBM capability will drop by 88 SLBMs or 31%. Even though the US plans to begin decommissioning some of the Ohio-class submarines in 2028, two years before the completion, let alone commissioning, of the US District of Columbia, this decommissioning will significantly diminish the triad's power. We expect the Columbia class to continue serving into the 2080s. The advantage of the Columbia class is the 42-year lifespan of the nuclear reactor, which means that the Columbia class, unlike the Ohio class, will not require midlife refueling of its nuclear reactor. This refueling typically takes two years to complete, increasing the Columbia class's availability 
and reducing the operating cost of the US SLBM fleet. The other advantage is that reducing the missile capacity will also reduce the Columbia class's operating cost. Increasing the number of warheads carried by future versions of the Trident II missile could compensate for the loss of warheads. The entire aging US nuclear triad has designated replacements and is scheduled to be replaced as most of the components have development histories that are over 50 years old, and in the case of the B-52, one year after the end of World War II. The end of the Cold War and the War on Terror did contribute to the United States' complacency in allowing its strategic forces to age well beyond their intended lifetimes. The main reason the US nuclear strategic force is still a credible deterrent is the significant investment that the US has dedicated to maintaining and upgrading its old components of the triad, but it has reached the point that there are few significant modernization options available before readiness starts to decline, and with it US nuclear deterrence. The 2030s are going to be a busy time for new weapons with their incremental strategic nuclear upgrades, just as experienced in the 1980s but this time with few to no expected protests. Upgrades are necessary, yet the world's transformation over the past 50 years makes a substantial nuclear force upgrade seem insignificant today when compared to the 1980s. It also means that along with the Chinese and Russian modernizations, that mutually assured destruction will continue in the world's zeitgeist.